For three years, it continued to do the same way as it had the first year. The call would come in, she would go hide, and she would cry, and that would be it. After the anniversary of her fourth year at this orphanage, the matron came in one Sunday morning and said, I have very good news. A very wealthy couple from America is coming tomorrow. And they are not going to adopt one child, they're going to adopt four. They're going to take two boys and two girls. For the briefest of moments, Irina thought, America. That it would be nice. Parents that have a lot of money, that would be nice. But what piqued her interest the most was that they were taking four children. Her chances were now double what they were because two of the children would be girls. But in that span of time that lasts, about the blink of an eye, the hope that had flared up in her little heart was extinguished when she remembered the fact that she looked the way that she does. If they were from America, they wouldn't want to take some ugly monster like her back to America. If they were rich, they certainly wouldn't want to take someone that looked like her back to their wealthy friends. The hope that had sprung up in her heart at the thought of being able to go with this family made it ache worse than any time that she had ever had to spend there because that hope that was extinguished had really made her feel something she had not felt in many years. The next day came. The call came for the children to get dressed and lined up. Irina went and found her usual spot up in the attic and started crying. The front door opened and in walked a very handsome, young middle-aged man in a very nice suit. He was followed by a beautiful woman in a very lovely dress. The children noticed these two people had smiles on their faces. They were whiter than any smile that they seemed to ever remember seeing on anybody. It was as though they couldn't, they couldn't be more happy to be in such a drab and terrible place. They watched this wealthy husband and wife talked to the matron, and then they walked down the line of children and spoke to every child. The ones that could speak English, they spoke English to. The ones that needed a translator, they spoke to the translator. When they had walked through the line and saw the children, the children looked at the man and they realized that his smile had fallen off of his face. He looked almost disappointed as he walked towards the front of the line back where the matron was. The matron saw and said, what is the matter? The husband said, well, are, is this all of the children that you have? I believe so. She kind of glances. He says, what's the problem? Well, we were kind of hoping that one of the children, and he's interrupted. He's interrupted by the sound of feet running towards him from the far end of the hall at the end of the line. He turns around to look and see a wave of blonde hair flash in front and then the footsteps stop. The wealthy man looks at his wife and they look at each other and they head down towards the end of the line. It's little Lorena. She had been in her normal spot crying when one of the orphanage's workers had found her and told her that she needed to go down and be in the line otherwise she wouldn't have supper that night. So she got dressed and went and ran and stood at the end of the line. She kept her head bowed and her eyes closed. She was not going to be able to avoid it, but she didn't have to look at that face, looking at her in disgust. She kept her head bowed and her eyes closed, and she heard the footsteps of this handsome man and this beautiful woman walking towards her. Her eyes were closed, and she heard him stop right in front of her. What is your name, little girl? She says, I am Arena, and I am eight years old. She says this as though she's having a conversation with the cracked linoleum floor. She refuses to lift her head to speak to the man. She doesn't want to see that look again. He says, you know how to speak English? She says, yes, I learned. I learned how to read in Russian and I found some books that had English and Russian and I taught myself to learn how to speak English. 
with the help of some of the other children that knew how to speak English. <coughs> this was kind of remarkable to the man. The only the older kids knew how to speak English, and here was a younger girl that could speak it. <coughs> he said, look up at me, sweetheart. She kept her head bowed and just kind of shook it slightly so that she could tell the man no. Please look up at me, sweetheart. No, she continued to shake her head. She knew that this might be her chance to maybe leave this terrible place, but just the thought of seeing the look on that man's face, this man who actually had spoken to her, I don't, I don't want to see that look. She heard the man approach her. He knelt down and he put his hand under her chin and lifted her head up. She refused to open her eyes, though. He might want me to see him, but I am not going to see him. Please, sweetheart, look at me. She is finally coaxed into opening her eyes, and she sees the man looking at her, this handsome man in a nice suit who's from America. She is temporarily shocked by the fact that he is not cringing at her. He is not closing his eyes and turning his head out of fear or horror or disgust. He's smiling. He is smiling, and the children notice that he is even smiling broader than he was when he first got there. Thank you, Arena. He stands back up. She puts her head back down and closes her eyes again. This is terrible for her. Here this man had come and talked to her, and she, he had even touched her burned and scarred face. And now he was walking away. She didn't see, however, the fact that this rich man, as he walked back down to the front, wiped a single tear from his eye. He did, she didn't see that he had discussed this new arrival with his wife. They went back to the front of the line and spoke with the matron for a second. And then the husband stepped out and said, All of you children need to know something. Those of you that are not coming with us today, you will have better food, nicer clothes, new books, new toys. My wife and I are going to start sending money to your house here every month. And I'm going to try and improve the condition of your life. This actually brought Irina a lot more joy than even the man touching her face. Here was as good a news as she could have hoped for. New toys. She had had a doll that she played with that her mom had given her before the fire, but it obviously had burned in the fire. And now at the orphanage, whatever toys were even available, the older kids seemed to take them so that she had nothing. Here was an opportunity for her to get better meals than the gruel or the goulash that seemed to dominate this menu, the menu of this orphanage. Her hope had been rekindled just a little bit because she knew that her life was going to be just a little bit better after this man left. The husband then said, The children that I have chosen, I will step in front of. I will give them a hug and a kiss. I will be your daddy. And you will be my child. And we will never be separated again. You will always be with me for as long as you want to be. The husband walked down the, the row and he came to one of the oldest boys that was at the orphanage. He knelt down and he gave the little boy a hug. And then he kissed the little boy on the forehead and said, Go get your thing, son. We're going home. <laughs> <laughs>